Operation Stella Polaris is a fascinating story about two characters in the Finnish and Swedish intelligence services during World War II, who launched an operation in 1944 that would last all the way until 1960. In 1944, Finland was fighting to survive, as the Soviet Union was pushing back its enemies on all fronts. Then the Soviet steamroller struck Finland and battles like Tali Ihtalanta and Iljumantsi ensued, which were Finnish victories, but just barely. Finland could not survive many more battles like that. They had to get a ceasefire and then a peace treaty, but would even that be enough? What would happen to Finland was unsure, and from this Operation Stella Polaris was born in the minds of Finnish Colonel Reino Halama and the Swedish Major Karl Petersen. Reino Halama had been at the heart of Finnish radio intelligence since the department was founded. He had as a lieutenant in 1927 been sent out to visit other countries' intelligence services, to learn about radio, radio direction finding vehicles and decryption. Returning the same year, he helped setting up the Finnish radio intelligence. Working his way up the ranks, he was in 1941 a lieutenant colonel, in charge of the HQ radio battalion, which cracked many country codes and kept reading the Soviet radio traffic, intercepting information on several Arctic convoys, among them PQ-18, which they directly sent to the Germans and he got an Iron Cross award in return. By 1944 he was a colonel and led an organization with a staff of over 1,000 personnel. Meanwhile in Sweden, Major Karl Petersen was out on adventures. Between 1911 and 1913 he was an instructor for the Persian Gendarmerie. According to some sources that I have not been able to verify, he took part in the Gallipoli campaign in 1915 with the British. By 1918 World War I was winding down. Finland had broken out of Mother Russia's embrace and declared independence, which led to a civil war and that Karl Petersen could not pass on. So he took part fighting against the communists getting to know the later Field Marshal Mannerheim personally. Field Marshal Mannerheim would be the commander-in-chief during World War II for Finland. By 1921 he was the head of the Paris Red Cross, which he remained uh, as until 1937, the logical conclusion of a military career perhaps. In 1939 he was at the Swedish Embassy in Berlin, but could only stay four months after the Germans kicked him out, declaring him a persona non grata. As he returned to Sweden, he was asked to set up a new organization called the Grensbyrån, which he accepted. This organization was later renamed Grenssektionen, the border section, and finally in 1942 getting its final name, Seebyrån, the Sea Bureau. The secret services in Sweden had a general assignment to collect, analyze, store and communicate intelligence and defense information important in regards to foreign actions, especially in the neighboring countries. And the task of Grensbyrån, an intelligence gathering organization, was to be able to operate even if Russia came close to the Swedish territory or territories important to Sweden. Reino Hallama, together with Karl Petersen, comes up with a plan, Operation Stella Polaris. They are afraid that the Soviets might still conquer and occupy Finland, and if that happens, all that intelligence that Hallama had gathered would be lost to the Russians. So that could not happen. The plan is to transfer a large part of the radio equipment and uh, archives from the Finnish radio intelligence services to Sweden. And there they would continue operating like they had in Finland, a secret service in exile. Or at least this is what Reino Hallama envisions. However, 
Most important is to keep all the intelligence material out of the Soviet hands. Surprisingly enough, the plan gets official sanction. People higher up probably seeing a few individuals creating a well-oiled machinery, gathering information about the common enemy, which for Sweden and Finland always was and will be probably Russia. Reino Hallama and Karl Petersen starts creating the plan. The officers that will come to Sweden might be blackmailed if Soviet Union occupies Finland, so their relatives cannot be left behind, they will also have to come. Karl Petersen will arrange the transport and the logistics in Sweden, and Hallama everything else. The operation is launched the 22nd of September 1944. Personnel and their families are not a couple of people, instead it is between 750 and 1000 persons, transported by four ships to Sweden. Around 4 to 500 boxes of radio and homing equipment and 170 boxes of intelligence material accompany them. All is going well until they land in Sweden. It is politically impossible for Sweden to allow a foreign country's intelligence service to work in Sweden, especially when you cannot keep it a secret. 10 people maybe, 1000 people most certainly not. And Karl Petersen will bear the brunt of the unhappiness about the situation. So the Finnish secret service acting from Sweden dies on the docks. But uh, what to do with the people and the material who now sits on those docks who's just waiting? The people are kept in Hörnösand and Gävle until they know what to do with them. The radio equipment goes to FRA, National Defense Radio Establishment, handling signal intelligence, and it's a great help in building up that organization. The boxes with the intelligence archives goes to Stockholm, and are placed in a basement of a hotel Aston. I mean, why not place highly classified stuff in the basement of a hotel? FRA finds that some of their radio equipment is water damaged, but some equipment is very advanced and is taken over by FRA. They also hire 20 of the Finnish personnel who were very competent, giving them Swedish citizenship on the spot. The 170 boxes of intelligence materials, codes, intercepts and other documentation is sorted in the hotel basement and seven boxes are put aside as especially important for Sweden. They also go to FRA. Meanwhile, Reino Hallama and others are busy microfilming all the materials. Seems like a good precaution. Now, it uh, turns out that the uh, Soviet Union did not annex Finland. Sweden would not allow a secret Finnish organization to operate in Sweden. And Finland itself were not too happy with the people who initiated this operation. So Operation Stella Polaris is dead. Well, the original concept anyway. So all the people, except those hired by FRA, have to be smuggled back to Finland avoiding suspicion from so the Soviet Union. And the officers that return are accused of betraying their duty by the Finnish state. Finland also requests to have the archives returned, but Finland will never see those boxes again. Uh, remember that microfilm taken by Hallema. Well, it does no good just sitting there, so he starts selling it to anyone who can pay which is France, USA and Japan. So he sells them to all. Some information bought by the USA is even forwarded to their allies, the Soviet Union. Ironically providing them the information the whole operation was created to stop them from having. The information contains Soviet codebooks, but also shows that French intelligence were listening to US communications. Explosive stuff in other words. But uh, what to do with the original boxes? Well, they decide to move the material from the hotel basement in 1945. 
Smart move. Don't want anyone drunk stumbling into a lot of highly classified stuff, now would you? So, what super secure location can be found for this explosive stuff? A bunker? A highly secured building? Or maybe the basement of one castle and one really big house? Well, the seven boxes that are important for Sweden goes to FRA and are secure. But the rest is handed to private persons and stored at Herningsholm Slot and Ottnero in their basements. So much for security. Finland is of course not super happy with Reino Halama selling their secrets to other countries. So he leaves Finland in 1945, going to France via Sweden and working for the French intelligence services until 1947. By then Finland had started pressuring France to extradite him, so he simply leaves for Spain, living there under the assumed name Ricardo Palma. Carl Petersen, head of the C Bureau, is fired in 1947. In part because he started a front company in 1944 called Scandia Stål, which sold weapons to the Danish and Norwegian resistance with a nice profit. Interestingly enough, Sebyron was tasked with uh, appropriating weapons for the resistance. But the main reason for firing him was that during the war he had exchanged information with the German Abwehr. And that was now a liability. So instead, C.D. Palm is the new head of C.Byron, who quickly changed his name to T.Byron. So eliminating the embarrass embarrassing fact of Abwehr collaboration. C.Byron, we have no clue what you mean, we have T.Byron. But they had nothing to do with the German intelligence. So what about the boxes of secret material stored in basements? Well, they remained there until 1960. Almost forgotten one would have thought. However, suddenly a retired general, Carl August Ehrensvärd, who had been the chief of the defense staff during Operation Stella Polaris, calls one morning and orders all the boxes to be burned right away. The only two persons who could have stopped this, a department head Weström at FRA and Åke Rosby, are both out and will not return to until after lunch, at which time the boxes were reduced to ashes. Interestingly enough, Carl August Ehrensvärd did not in fact have the authority to have the material burned. He was a pensioner after all. And why it was burned in 1960 nobody knows. Possibly some secret that 15 years later was still hot stuff. So ended the operation codenamed Stella Polaris. I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.